Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if my tribe cause you've been so good. How many know that today? You You've been better You've than been good. Better God. Than good. I, I can't praise you enough. Because I owe you, Jesus. I owe you my life. I can't praise can't you enough. I can't praise you enough. How you 
set me free How you made a way When there was no way How you made a way When there was no way How you made a way When there was no way, way. oh God You made a way I had to let it go So good. Can I get a witness? You've been so good. So good. When I was sick in the hospital, nobody but God did it. When I was laying there, couldn't say nothing, God. Can I minister to you just for a moment? It wasn't nothing that your wife done or your family done. But because of his goodness, you're standing here today. I have a witness in the room that knows God been so good to you. Could have lost your man a long time ago, but God said so. You've been so good. Yeah, you have, Lord. Do I have a witness in the room today? So good. You've been so good. So in the room that know God been better than good to you. There was many times when you was all by yourself. Nobody but God did it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you had to steal away. Can I just minister to you today? <laughs> See, I saw what you was going through. But when nobody else was around but you and God, I can only hear you Look it up to 12 heaven and just let them know. I need the oh, I need the every hour. I need the oh, bless, bless me now. Let me hear 
today. Amen. Amen. Listen, glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Glad to be amongst God's people. Um, I want to just welcome everybody who are who is here visiting with us and all of my family members, all of our friends who are here with us. Let's thank God for all of our visitors who are here with us today. 
got family who've come from both near and far and from a wide. And um, I just want to say thank you so much. Can we give it up again for Deacon Pringle? Amen. Um, me and Deacon Pringle, um, we go way back. When I, when I first got saved, um, which was about 26 years ago, one of the things we did was we created a little choir called Solid Rock. And um, we was a whole bunch of non-singing, we, we was a whole bunch of non-singing, non-instrument playing folk who just loved Jesus. Uh, we didn't know what we was doing, but we loved the Lord, and uh, we would go and sing every. We would look in the newspaper for revivals. Um, some of y'all don't y'all don't remember about that. We look for excuses not to be in church today, but we was looking for church when I was growing up. And um, and Deacon Pringle, though I remember, I still remember to this day um, the first time I heard him sing. Um, of course, I grew up across the street from Deacon Pringle. And um, his mother, Miss Dora, my God, um, just an amazing woman. And she was, in our neighborhood, she was the freeze cup lady. Some of y'all, you know y'all remember freeze cup ladies? She was the freeze cup lady, and she, uh, we would go in, and we'd just drop a dime in that little plastic cup, and we'll get a freeze cup out of that freezer, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll suck on them freeze cups, man, and have ourselves a, a good old time. But I hardly ever saw... Of Deacon Pringle, I hardly ever saw him, and um, you know, and and then I, I would start seeing him at night. It was about the only time I would see him, and he had this motorcycle that I fell in love with. And um, come to find out, Deacon Pringle, you know, he was kind of the nightlife type person. And um, I never forget though, the first time I heard him sing over at the Baptist Church, he sung a commission song, um, which was "Running Back to You." I didn't even know he sings. I didn't know what he could sing at the time. And he sung, he began to sing this song I had never heard before, a song that I was not even familiar with. And me being a young, young man, I wasn't even saved at the time, but something I recognized that he had on his life was the anointing of God. He has the anointing of God on his life. I began to just weep and cry. I had never even heard that song but how many of y'all know when people are anointed you ain't even got to know the song God will move through their voice God will move through their gifting and I want to say Deacon Pringle how much you meant to me and um, he just has a special heart for God has never asked us for a dime just always have just just be, come and been a blessing to us and I'm grateful to God for him can we thank God for people like that in the kingdom of God You know, we, uh, we kind of grow up in a time now where people, you know, they won't do nothing in, in the church if they ain't getting something. If they ain't getting a dime, if they ain't getting a dollar, if they ain't getting a nickel, they're not getting something. But Deacon Pringle, his heart has always just been in the right place, and I thank God for it. And listen, I want to say thank God again. I see many family members who are here. Are, all the Orlando folk make some noise. Okay, all the Atlanta folk make some noise. I was waiting for my Uncle Irvin to make some noise. All the Jacksonville folk make some noise. I got family members from all the places. All the Stark folk make some noise. Let's see who else. Lake City folk make some noise. Let's see who else we got. We got Lakeland folk, Clearwater folk make some noise. My God, that's right, that's right, that's right. My Uncle David, what, what's, what's the town y'all from, Uncle David? Port St. Lucie folk make some noise. All the, all the McClenny, Margareta, in the woods, in the backwoods folk make some noise. All the Lake Butler folk make some noise. Lake City folk make some noise. My, uncle, my cousin Wayne, he just ain't going to say nothing. Old Lusty folk make some noise. All the Jesus lovers make some noise in the room. Listen, again, um, you know, I didn't even know all you were coming today. I thought this was going to be a regular just Sunday, but you guys have just made this a special treat. And um, to see you guys here, um, I had no idea that y'all was going to be here, man. And y'all done kind of put a pressure on a brother now. Um, to be here in the house of the Lord. I was just going to get up here and just talk a little bit, but now y'all got me feeling like I, got, I just got to preach. I got to say something. Um, 
and to my to my mother-in-law who is here, uh, my my beautiful wife's mother. Y'all thank God for my mother-in-law as well. Thank God for her and for her. She has a sister and brother-in-law who's here and a daughter and kids who are here with us too as well. Praise God for them. And um, God is just good. And, you know, anytime that we come together in the house of the Lord, it should be like a, just a brand new family reunion, man. And, um, and I'm grateful to God for that. It is good for us to be here. That's what Peter, James, and John said to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. He said, it is good for us to be here. Man, and I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm glad to be in the number one more time. Man, man, God has been good to us. One of, one of the songs that, that has been uh, plaguing my mind is that there's nobody like Jesus. Amen. We can search the whole world over and still can't find nobody like Jesus. Amen. And this song come to mind. Amen. There's not a friend like the holy Jesus. No, not one. No. Not one, none else could heal all my soul diseases. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus, no. leave this with you. Amen. It's one of the, uh, the blues singers sung. Turn out the lights. Light a candle. <laughs> Come on, y'all give it up for my Uncle Dave. Tell somebody to keep the lights on today. Don't turn them all out. Listen, y'all get your Bibles out, Jeremiah 29 and 11. You might have came for something different, but in our church we believe in the Word of God. And um, Jeremiah 29 and 11 is what we will look at. Once you find Jeremiah 29 and 11, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet for the reading of God's word. I want to say to our church family, don't forget um, on this upcoming Friday, we have a major responsibility. Um, we will be blessing our high school football team uh, for break for our homecoming breakfast, our annual homecoming breakfast. This is our eighth year that we have been able to um, serve them in that capacity. And so, um, if you can help out, um, if you can assist, please get with Sister Lisa and make sure that you um, let her know how you'll be able to serve. So, just a wonderful way of us serving our, our high school team and our community. And also, don't forget, um, continue to help us to spread the word about our bicycle Christmas giveaway. Uh, we already have 26 bicycles. Amen. We have 100 bicycles. That is our goal. And uh, many people have already jumped way on um, ahead of time and helping us out to do that. Something else I want to encourage you to do, just in case 
If you're not aware, um, in about 40 days is going to be a major election. And I want to encourage every person to make sure you're registered to vote. Not only registered to vote, I want to encourage y'all to vote early. Somebody say vote early. I want to encourage you to vote early because there ain't no telling what's going to happen on that first Tuesday. There's no telling what might happen to machines and butterfly ballots and stuff break down. So let's vote early. I think in Florida, vote, early voting starts on October the 22nd. And um, let's, let's make sure we make our voice heard. Um, no needing us complaining, no needing us marching, no needing us protesting if we don't put a check in a box. Amen, somebody. No needing us talking about what's not happening and what's not taking place if we're not doing our job as it pertains to voting. No vote, no voice. So make sure, let's make sure that we're doing that. Let's make sure that we pray as we select and as we vote. Let's make sure we do that. This is a pivotal time in our country. It's a pivotal time in our communities. I don't know if y'all recognize it or not, um, but there's a spirit of division that's all around the land. I've been living in the Marby 43 years, and I, have, I cannot in, in the days of my time remember a time of divisiveness of what we see right now. And if there's anything that we need to do as people of God is make sure that we take on our responsibility to help to change some things. Um, there's also a major, I think it's, I think it's amendment number four. I want to encourage y'all to as well. That's something that I'm very passionate about. Um, amendment, because a lot of times, how many of y'all know a lot of times you go to vote and you don't know what you're voting for? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Amendment number four um, is particularly where those who have served their time in prison, um, if they pay their, their price to society, uh, we can change it so that those people are allowed to vote. Those people, those people should be allowed to vote if they have served their time in their community or served their time in prison, served their time and paying their time. Uh, they should be allowed to vote. Currently, there's 1.4 million people in the state of Florida who cannot vote because of that. And if we do our job, we can make it so that everybody in our state will be able to have a voice when it comes to voting. Somebody say amen. Now, somebody might be saying, why are we talking about this kind of stuff in church? Why are we, why are we, are we even discussing this kind of stuff in church? Well, for far too long, we haven't talked about it in church. And because of that, it's affected our kids, it's affected our grandkids, it's affected our school systems and our bank accounts. And we need to do our job as it pertains to these kind of things. Amen, somebody. So I want to encourage you to do that. I don't, I don't never try to manipulate people and who to vote for, but you need to vote. Amen, somebody. All right, I've, I've stalled long enough. Does everybody have Jeremiah 29 and 11? If you have it, say amen. All right. I'm going to first read this out of the King James Version. Then I'm going to read this out of the New International Version. Um, and then uh, we're going to hear what thus said the Lord. I just got a few points that I'm going to share with you. I've been sharing with our church about God's plan over the last number of weeks. And I want to um, close that out on today. So um, let's look at Jeremiah 29 and 11. If we can, can we read this out loud in concert? Let's read. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11, the New International Version says it like this. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. So we've been talking for the last few weeks about God's plan for our life. So I want to I continue that and finish that on today and just finish talking to y'all about God's plan. Tell your neighbor God has a plan for your life. Look at somebody else and tell them God has a plan for your life. Let's pray while we're standing. Father, we thank you now. We're in this room and we're in this place for one purpose and one purpose alone. That's to give your name glory. Thank you so much for your goodness and your grace and your loving kindness towards us. You brought us, God, up dangerous highways and you brought us up roads all because that you have a word for us and for us to hear something that you want to say. 
God, I thank you now. I pray, God, that you just help us to seize this moment so we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Speak to us now as only you can. Those who are not saved, God, I pray that this becomes a moment where those who do not have a relationship with you will come into a place where they know you as their personal Savior. Those who need healing, heal the broken hearts, God, are in this room. Heal hurting bodies in this room. God, just have your way amongst your people on today. Deliver, God, minds that are bound. Do whatever you want to do in this place. And God will forever honor you and will forever thank you. And devil, we want you to know right now that you have no say-so and you have no place in this house. Devil, you are defeated by the name and by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you now for the victory that we have in you. And we thank you for what you're going to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We say amen, amen, and amen. You could be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to change this mic real quick, Dee. I'm going I'm to go to la my lapel mic so that I can hopefully just kind of talk to us for a little bit. Um, I want, I want to, again, finish out this, this message that I've been dealing with for the last number of weeks about God's plan um, for our lives. One thing I've learned is that God has a unique plan for each and every one of us that is in this room. Um, each and every one of us, God has a plan for us. And the only plan that matters is the plan that God has formed and God has made for each and every one of us. Um, and so with that in mind, I just want to give y'all three points and we'll, I'll be done if you give me just about 15 minutes, I'll be done with what God has laid in my heart as it pertains to this message. So I want to just give you three points as it pertains to God's plan. First of all, I want you to understand that God's plan is customized. His plan is customized. Everybody say God's plan is customized. Now, I want to first of all give you a verse, um, Psalms 139 and 16. You don't have to turn there. I'll read it for you. Psalms 139 and 16, it says this. It says, thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned. Everybody say fashioned. In other words, it was fashioned. It was, it was customized. It was tailor-made just for you. When as yet, there was none of them. So again, I want you to understand that God's plan for your life is customized. I, um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't have the opportunity um, much to have what you would consider to be um, customized suits um, for the most part growing up. Um, I had off the rack suits and I would go to J.C. Penney's and Sears and there was nothing like going there and getting a suit with my grandma who just came in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, she would take me to uh, get suits and there was a place called Looking Good in Gaines. Is, is, is that still open? Looking Good and Soul Train. And, um, and then for the folk from Jacksonville, I'll never forget Aunt Dot introducing us to Iceman and Mr. Kicks. And we would go to these different places and get suits. Well, uh, Deacon Brigham know what I'm talking about. These suits would just be off the rack. And you just had to, you know, just had to wear them however you wore them. You know, if it hung off your arms, it hung off your arms. If it was a little long, it was just a little long. If, it, if the um, legs was a little long, that's just the way it was. Well, I never forget, though, a few years ago, um, calling my Uncle Joe, and, uh, and I asked him, I said, do you know a suit guy in Orlando? And he hooked me up with this guy by the name of Alfonso, who, had, who was a preacher and who has gone on to be with the Lord. And he, he made suits for all types of professional athletes, professional athletes in, um, that was on the Orlando Magic team, professional athletes that played with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and many other um, professional athletes and many high-class businessmen. Well, I remember going in and going in and he taking my measurements of pretty much my whole body. He would measure my neck. He measured the length of my arms. He measured the length of my legs, my hips, and, 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 and my waist and, and my chest and all parts of my body. And I had never had that done before. I had never had someone to measure me like that. And so what happened was he went and then they went and cut a suit and made a suit that was specifically made for my body type. Um, in other words, after the suit was sewn, after the suit was made, 
pretty much I will probably be the only person to be able to wear that, wear that suit because it was customized just for my body. Um, and so, in other words, in the same way it is with the customized suit, it's the same way with the customized plan that God has for your life. Nobody else can put it on. Nobody else can wear it. Nobody else can try it on. Matter of fact, if they try it on, it might rip in the back. If somebody else tried to put it on, it might, it might tear it or might, might stretch it a little because it's been customized just for you. And not only has your plan been customized just for you, the other people's plan has been customized just for them. You can't be like somebody else. You can't walk in somebody else's shoes. You can't walk in somebody else's gift. You can't walk in somebody else's relationship. You can't walk in somebody else's talent. Why? Because what God has for you, as the old songwriter said, it is for you. And so you got to understand, that's why you should never be jealous of anybody else. That's why you should never be envious of anybody else. Because what God has for them is for them. And what God has for you is for you. Matter of fact, you, it probably will blow your mind if you begin to recognize and understand what some people had to go through to get what they got and to be where they are. It will literally blow your mind. See, because sometimes we look at where they are right now, but we don't see the process that they had to go through in order to get to where they are. I wish I had a praying church in here today. Tell your neighbor God's plan is customized. It's customized. It's, it's, it's specifically for you. There are strengths that you have that other people don't have. There are talents that you have that other people don't have. There are gifts that you have that other people don't have. There are certain things that only you can do that if somebody else was to try it, it would literally blow their mind. There are, there, there, there's a special gift that you're able to walk in. And so when we talk about God's plan for your life, something I want you to understand is that it's been customized specifically for you. It's been customized specifically for you. God said this in, in his word. He said that, he said that my, uh, in, in thy book all my members were written, in Psalms 139 and 16, in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned. When God made you, he made you a certain way. He created you a certain way. He, he designed you a certain way. You are a designer's original. That's why you should never try to be a carbon copy of anybody else. That's why you should never try to be anybody else. I always tell the young people that I'm around, that's why you shouldn't try to be like some person you see on TV or some person you saw in a magazine or some person you don't saw on the internet. Why? Because that's them. That's what God made them to be. But you're different. God made you an incredible woman. God made you an incredible man. And you should just be happy with whatever God has made you to be. I wish I had a witness in this room. You know, I wish, I say all the time, I, I, wish, I wish to God I can sing. Let me tell you something, if I could sing like Deacon Pringle, we would never get out of church. We would literally never get out of church because I will sing until I fall out. I will literally sing until I fall out. I, 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 would not, I, I would not take time to preach. I would get up here and just sing and just go at it until I got no more voice. I will sing until my throat turns literally into cotton. But God didn't make me like that. How many of y'all glad of that? God didn't make me like that. God didn't make me like that. I wish, I, wish I, can, I wish I can do things like other people are able to do and other people are gifted to do. But God didn't make me like that. God customized his plan for my life. So I want you to know, number one, as we talk about God's plan, is that it's customized. Here's the second thing I want you to get. I'm already halfway through. The second thing is that God's plan is good. I'm going to say it again. God's plan is good. Hmm. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Now, if you don't get that, it's good news right there in that part of that verse right there. Plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, for some reason, many people, they think that God sat down one day and he designed a sinister life plan which is laced with pain and defeat. But nothing can be further from the truth. When God designed the plan of God for your life, I want you to know that the end result of his plan for your life is a good plan. It is a good plan. Now, let me tell you something. On its way to becoming a good plan, you might go through pain, 
You might go through hurt. You might go through a few defeats. But let me tell you something. In the end, though, you win. God's plan for your life is a good plan. And I want to prophesy to somebody and tell you today that the end of God's plan for your life is a happy ending. Glory to God, somebody. Glory to God. His plan is good. His plan is good. In other words, you need to understand whenever you are going through something, I don't care if you're in the middle of pain right now. I don't care if you're in the middle of a trial right now. I don't care if you're in the middle of a bad circumstance right now. Let me prophesy to you right now. If it's not good, it ain't over. If it's not a good situation, it ain't over. Because God's plan for your life, it, 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 it is determined. God's plan for your life is guaranteed to turn out good for you. If you just keep walking with God, if you keep serving God, if you keep living for Jesus, I want to tell you something, that God's ultimate plan for your life is a good plan. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? The Bible tells me in Romans 8 and 28, it says, For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. In other words, everything might not be good, but at the end it's going to turn out good. Let me, let me, get, let me give you a quick example. Some of y'all, you don't, you don't know about this kind of stuff, but my grandmother, Grandma Susie, she used to make cakes from scratch. You don't, you don't know nothing about that. Well, 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 let me help you out. You, don't, you, don't, you know, now we just go get a box and all we need is just oil and eggs. That's all we need now. And, and, and some water to throw in it. But my grandmother, she had a box and, 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 or she had flour that she would use to make um, cakes from scratch. And so what would happen is she would have all of these individual ingredients that she would use to make the cake. She'll have the vanilla extract. She'll have the eggs. She'll have the sugar. She'll have the flour. She'll have some other things that she told, told us. I wish I would have got all the secret recipes that my grandma had. I would be a rich joker today. But she had all of these, these things that she would put in the cake. Now, let me tell you something, though, about I learned, and I learned about my grandmother making a cake. Nobody would go and take a handful of flour and just throw it in their mouth. Nobody would do that. You'd be crazy if you do that. Nobody would go and take a bottle of vanilla extract and take a bottle of it and begin to drink it. It's not going to taste good. It's not going to be right. So, so in other words, though, but what would happen is she would take a nice little metal bowl that she had sitting up on the counter. She would take the flour, put it in the bowl. She would take the vanilla extract and put it in the bowl. She would take the three or four eggs and put it in the bowl. She would take the other ingredients and put them in the bowl. Now, let me help you out with something. All of those ingredients by themselves tasted nasty. But when my grandmother, who didn't have a mixer at the time, would take an old wooden spoon, put it in the bowl, and put it under her arm. I remember seeing that fat under my grandmother's arm. It would flap under her arm. She would take it and she would whip it. She would whip it and she would, she, would, she would just stir it and stir it. And then all of a sudden, what began to happen is individual ingredients that didn't taste good by themselves, when you mix them up together, all of a sudden something began to happen and all of a sudden it began to taste good. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So the scripture says all things work together for the good of them that love God. So in other words, some of your trials and some of the circumstances you go through by themselves, they don't look good and they don't feel good. But when God starts mixing it up together, oh, y'all didn't come. When God starts mixing it up together, after a while, it's going to be good. And, and my grandmother, you know, we used to fight, me and Trina and Quita and Walt, we used to fight over just licking the bowl. The cake didn't even have to already be done. We would fight over licking the bowl and who was going to get a chance to put their finger in the bowl and just, you know, just, just be able to take the batter. And then so grandmother, she would then take the batter out of the bowl and then she would put it in the cake pan and then she would put it in the oven and then, and then she would put it on 400 degrees and then all of a sudden she would tell us, nobody walk in the kitchen. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Because if you walk in the kitchen, it might make the cake fall. And so we had to stay out of the kitchen for at least an hour, an hour and a half, or two hours, because Grandma was cooking something in the kitchen. She was doing something, and we didn't understand it before. But when it was all over and said and done, all of a sudden, when she would take the cake out the oven and she would slice it up, and we'd take some sliced strawberries and throw it on top of that cake, 
all of a sudden what didn't taste good by itself, Uncle Irvin, all of a sudden began to taste good when it was mixed up together. Tell somebody God's plan is good. So you need to understand that. So, so individually, individually, the things you might be going through, it might not feel good right now. The stuff you went through 10 years ago, it might didn't make sense 10 years ago. The stuff you went through five years ago, that bad relationship, that bad job you had, that bad circumstance you went through, that divorce you went through, that bankruptcy you went through, that foreclosure you went through, all of that stuff, that death of that child you went through, all of that stuff you went through by themselves didn't feel good. But I want to tell you behind the scenes, God is cooking something and getting you ready for something that's going to blow your ever-loving mind. I I wish I had a praying church in this place. You got to train yourself to understand that God's plan is good. It's good and it's working out for your life. So God has something that he's doing in you and in your life. And then the third thing is this, and I'm fit to be done. The third thing you got to understand is that God's plan is guaranteed. God's plan is guaranteed. Everybody say, God's plan is guaranteed. I want to give you a verse, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24. It says this, it says, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. What God calls you to, you need to understand, he empowers you to do. If God calls you to something, He's going to empower you to be able to finish it. Here's another verse for you. And here's my last verse for the day. It's Philippians 1 and 6. And it says this, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, if God has called you to do something, if God has called you to complete something, if God has called you to start something, you need to understand that according to God, that is going to be guaranteed. That God is, God is, is he, he has a responsibility that if he calls you to do something, that there is not a witch, there is not a warlock, there is not a curse, there is not a demon from hell that can stop you or block you from doing what God has called you to do. I wish I had a witness in this church. So if God calls you to do something, it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. I, I, I never forget when we, uh, and it's, it's hard to believe. I was thinking about this this morning when I came out to the church. Um, I, for, for 21 years, um, I, I always come out, and I came out this morning, sister, Sister Audrey was out here decorating and doing some stuff. And for 21 years, I've always come out here about 5.30. Every Sunday, I come out to the church 5.30 in the morning. Um, just kind of do a walk around, make sure everything is okay, make sure nothing has been vandalized or stolen or anything messed up, and turn air on and those kind of things. And, uh, but I remember 21 years ago, when we first started our church. i never forget, we were still over in the small building. And i never forget walking up to the building, and there was blood on the door. Had no idea what it was. You know, I'm a 21-year-old preacher. I had no idea what this was. There was blood on the door. Then there was what looked to be a voodoo doll. And then it was a note along with the voodoo doll that said, close the church down. That, and it went on to say that we're praying against you. Now, I never met who the we was. I never met who the day was. I never met who it was that tried to throw a curse and tried to throw incantation on our church and on the people of God, but I made an announcement to the devil that, that day. I said, devil, you done messed with the wrong one. I said, devil, you might have roots, but I got the root of Jesse. Devil, you might have power, but we got all power. Devil, you might try something, but let me tell you something, God has already finished what he started. So I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't care what the enemy has tried against you. I don't care what the enemy has tried to throw against your family, against your kids, against your marriage, against your money, against your mind. I'm here to announce to somebody today that the devil, whatever he tries, it won't work. It won't work against your pocketbook. It won't work against your bank account. It won't work against your health. I decree that you shall live and not die, declares the Lord. 
I wish I had a witness in here that began to understand that God's got something in store for you. He's got something in store for you. Let me tell you something, 21, uh, and I thought about it this morning. I've been pastoring Uncle Joe for 21 and a half years of my life. That's half. I'm, 40, I'm finna turn 43. Most people say we weren't going to make it 21 days. Most people say we weren't going to make it 21 weeks. But I learned some Uncle David, that when God's hand is on your life, it don't matter what the devil might try to do to stop you. It don't matter what the devil might try to block you. I'm here to tell you something. We done had some mountain highs. We done had some valley lows. We done had some people to join us. We done had some people to walk away from us. But I done learned in 21 and a half years that if God is with you, it doesn't matter who walks away and it doesn't matter who stays. If God be for you, he's more than the world against you. If God is on your side, Tell somebody God has a plan for your life. God, that's the reason why you wasn't aborted. That's the reason why you didn't die in the car wreck. That's the reason why cancer hasn't killed you. That's the reason why the heart attack, a heart attack didn't take you out. That's the reason why your friends died of AIDS, but you're still living. Why? Because God has a plan for your life. And if God has a plan for your life, it is a testimony that he's not finished with you and he's still got something for you to do. Somebody give God glory right there. Come on, give him glory right there. Give him glory. I was just going to talk to y'all, but I feel the Holy Ghost coming into the room because somebody needs to know that God has a plan for your life. Y'all not with me, and I don't need all of the, you know, all of the, the stuff we usually have video and all this other stuff. I don't need that today because I, when I woke up this morning, when my feet hit the ground, I told the devil, you messed with the wrong one. Yesterday, I was so sick. I, I had diarrhea, and I was vomiting all at the same time while I was in the barbershop with my kids, and I was sitting there as sick as, has any of y'all ever thrown up so much, you just told the Lord, just go ahead and take me home. I was like, Lord, just go ahead and just take, I, I don't, you know, I, would, I didn't feel nothing, man. I was so sick, I was like, it might feel better just to go ahead and be in heaven. But let me tell you something, while I was sitting in there, I said, devil, you trying to keep me from sharing this word for somebody. Somebody needs to know that God has a plan on their life. They done failed, but it doesn't mean that they're finished. They messed up, but it doesn't mean that their life is over. They've made some mistakes, but it doesn't mean that God is through with them. God still got something for you to do. You messed up, but God still has something for you to do. And I wish you ought to give God a good 10 second praise because God has a wonderful and a great and a good plan for your life. He's got a plan for your life. Matter of fact, I'm done, but I need for somebody to do this for me real quick. I don't do this every week. I kind of just talk every week. But I need for you to help me out. Go and touch seven people and tell them God's got a good plan for your life. Come on, you got to get up out of your seat and help me with this one. I need somebody to tell somebody God's got a plan for your life. He's got a plan for your life. Come on, how can you just sit there? Come on, we need to see our children get, get a plan for their life. Come on, how can we just be, how can we just be set back? God's got a plan for our life. Come on, he's got a plan for your life. You didn't drive from Orlando. You didn't drive from Port St. Lucie. You didn't just drive from Lake City. God drove you here to tell you he's got a plan for your life. He's got a plan for your life. Go to, he's got a plan for your life. He's got a plan for your life. You're not dead because he's got a plan for your life. You're not in prison because you got a plan for your life. You're not in the cemetery, Brother Michael, because he's got a plan for your life. We haven't had your funeral because God's got a plan for your life. Aunt Earlene, God's got a plan for your life. Auntie Dot, God's got a plan for your life. God is not finished with you yet.
can I just get about 15 people that really know the Lord to give God just a good 15 second praise and begin to give God some praise and let the devil know that God's got a plan for your life. Come on, he's got a plan for your life. Come on, he's got a plan for your life. That's why the witch couldn't kill you. That's why the root worker couldn't take you out. I don't care what they put over your door frame. It couldn't take you out. Because God's got a plan for your life. Everyone standing. I'm done. Woo! Come on, somebody just put your hands together and thank the Lord. He's got a plan for your life. I want to tell you something. God is not finished with you. I don't care if you're 8 or 80. 88, 98, 108. He ain't through with you. He's got an incredible plan for you. Your job is not just for you to make money. It's a ministry. Where you work, your place of employment, it's not just for you to get a paycheck. Quit going there and saying you can't wait till Friday every Monday. Those five days you're there, there's somebody for you to minister to. You're there to be a light. He has a plan for your life. You kids that are in school, you're in school to be a witness unto others. If you teach a class, if you coach a team, it's not just to win games, it's to minister unto those players. Whatever you do, wherever you work, it is a ministry. It's a part of the plan of God for your life. I look, I look over my life and I look at something, even I shared a few weeks ago how even many of the jobs that I hated, it's a part of the plan of God for my life. I never forget, I never forget. I still to this day call it the worst job of my life. I came home from FAMU one summer and I needed a job and my mama, she hooked me up with a family member who had a construction company in Lake City. Hooked me up with Lucius. And um, worst job of my life, it was construction. I thought I was going to be, going to be build man, building mansions. I get there, the first thing they tell me is to tear down sheetrock on a building, to rip up two by fours out of the floor. And then we went back and, and then we would spend time putting two by fours down on the, on the floor and framing walls and putting sheetrock up. And then we started running wire. We started, I started learning how to do plumbing, started learning all of these different things as it pertains to building houses. I hated it. I hated it. I, I, I never forget. I mean, it was just, it was just, it was a, it was just, it was just a horrible job, horrible job. Dust getting in my eyes all the time, nailing, hammering nails, hitting my finger every now and then. And I love me some me. I don't like no marks on my body. I just don't. I just don't like marks on my body. But I never knew that the skills I learned then, I would need them down the road. If I never had that job, we would have never built this church. We would have never built this church. Because I learned things about sheetrock, learned things about running wire, learned things about plumbing. I never forget when we had the plumbing being run in this church and we had a guy who was trying, he was a shyster, man. He was, a, he was trying to get over on us, trying to do half a job. And I went in, and because of something I learned at 18 years old, 18 years old, I saw that he was doing something wrong. I said, bro, this ain't right. You got this all wrong. He was like, where you learned that at? See, it was all a part of the plan of God. And that's just minor. You, you're in this room, everything you've gone through, it's not for you, it's for you to help somebody else. <laughs> it's for you to help somebody else. 
It's a part of God's plan. You're not just some person just drifting in the earth. There's over 6 billion people in the world. But every last one of them has significance in the eyesight of God. Every last person on this planet, God has you in mind. He has you in mind. He, he watches you. Matter of fact, the Bible says he knows the very number of hair you got on your head. Even the hair you bought. He knows that too. He knows the number of your days. My times, the psalmist said, are in his hand. He has an incredible plan for you. Part of his plan, believe it or not, was you having a relationship with him. And this is what I want to do for just this moment. If you're in this room, I'm going to give two opportunities to make the greatest decision that you can make in your life. First of all, number one, if you're in this room and you, you're not saved, you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, God saved me back in 1992. Me and my mother, we got saved the same week. My life has not been the same ever since for 26 years. Now, I'm not talking about just joining a church. I'm not talking about becoming religious. I was religious before I got saved. I was probably the most religious person you can think of. I was the, a junior usher. I was junior Sunday school superintendent. I was on every choir you can think of, but I didn't know Jesus. If you're in this room and you don't know Jesus, God has kept you alive so that you can make a decision to receive him. And so I don't care if you're 8, 80, 88, 98, I don't care what age you are. If you don't know Jesus, the world is a crazy place right now. Tomorrow is not promised to nobody. My grandma used to say, and I, I, I refer to my grandma so much, she used to say things that didn't make sense back then, but a lot of it makes sense now. My grandma used to say, it's people dying that never died before. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You don't know Jesus. Your mother's relationship with God, your daddy's relationship with God, your wife's or husband's relationship with God is not going to be enough. If you don't know Jesus, I want to give an opportunity to receive him into your life, to give your life to him. If you're backslidden, I want to give an opportunity to get back in right fellowship and right relationship with him. Or even if you need a church home, I want to give it an opportunity to get in a good church and get connected to a house of God. If you meet any of those criteria, I want to call you up to this altar now and I want to pray with you and I want to pray for you so that you can make the greatest decision that you can make in your life. I want to give you that choice today in Jesus' name. I'm going to give you just 15 seconds to make that decision that you need to make. I give myself so you can use me. So you Come on, sing a little bit. I give myself. I give myself away. I give myself away. Come on, so you. So you. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. I give myself. I give myself away. Yes, Lord. I give myself away. Listen, while your hands are lifted, I just want to pray for us. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. Thank you for your word today. You have an incredible plan over our lives. And we're grateful for that today, sir. We're grateful, God, for what you've done and for what you're doing and for what you're going to do. God, you are an amazing God. You've kept us alive for a reason. You've kept us alive for a purpose. And it's because you've got something great, not only for us to experience, but for us to do. God, we forever will give your name the glory for this and the honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's thank the Lord.
Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Before you be seated, why don't you do this? Go and hug a few people and tell them God has a plan for your life. Come on, give at least five people a good God bless your hug and tell them God has a plan for your life. I give myself. I give myself away. Come on, can we just give the Lord a big praise all over this room? Listen, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Listen, we're going to prepare our hearts to give. We're going to give and then we're going to be dismissed. And I want to make sure I have, um, I don't know if there's any special um, rules for you to give. Listen, we're so grateful for you as you give and as you sow today. We are we're just delighted again for all of our visitors and family members who have come to be with us. Um, is it Sister Ellie? Is there any special instructions for us um, afterwards for us um, food? I know we're going to need the guys. We're going to transform this room. Uh, we're going to make it to where we'll be eating in here. So um, keep that in mind. Um, we have the tables right outside that door right there. So all the guys that can help us out, please, please, please um, help us out with that. And praise the Lord. Uh, today we also is celebrating our pastor uh, appreciation and birthday. Tomorrow, uh, October the 1st, you'll be how old? 21. <laughs> I think it's 40 something. Forward to something. So uh, what we're doing today, we have the Black Buckets, uh, our regular offering, and the Love offering is for our pastor. If you would like to share in uh, and celebrating his birthday and appreciation. And also, like we say, when the service is over, we'd like for you all to go on out. The men will set up the tables, and we need some women to decorate the tables as soon as they put the uh, tables up. Thank you. So it'll take just a quick second afterwards, after we give the benediction, it should take no more than about 10 minutes and we'll be able to fellowship and have some good food. Um, we're gonna set it up right in here in the um, sanctuary. And then so um, they'll be, of course, serving back here. Let's make sure all of our out of town guests get in line first and so that they can be blessed and um, get something to eat. And um, again, Again, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. You guys are tremendous. Y'all are wonderful. Um, I'm humbled. I'm humbled by any gesture that you guys um, have shown and have shown already. I am just truly, truly humbled, and um, I love you dearly. So listen, we're going to stand to our feet. We are going to sow, and we're going to give unto the Lord. What we do is we have a... Um, a prayer that we normally would do, but I'm going to just I'm going to just pray over our offering, and then after that, after we pray, the center aisle will have a seat. The two outside aisles will follow the um, instruction of the ushers. So let's do this. Let's lift our offering to the Lord, and I'm going to just pray over them as they're lifted. Father, we thank you now for this opportunity to be able to sow, to be able to give, to be able to just um, honor you in the way of giving and tithes on today. God, we love you so much. We glorify you. Thank you, God, for the opportunity um, to be able to be a blessing. You said you bless us so that we can be a blessing, and we are grateful for that. Now we pray as we give, give us a hundredfold return that only you can give back to us, and it is in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus we pray. We say amen, amen, and amen. Let's bless the Lord through our giving. Afterwards, if you'd like to give with your debit or credit card, you can see Sister LaShonda out there at the, at the reception desk. Thank you. God bless you.
43 once, right? So I want to try to enjoy as best as I can. Listen, love you guys tremendously. Again, to all of you who are here with us today, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking your time out celebrating the Lord with us. Listen, you grab your neighbor by the hand if you haven't already done so. I'm going to give our benediction. Again, yes. men, we'll be bringing the tables in here, and then what we will do is we'll set this area up in here to be able to eat. And then we will line up back in the fellowship hall to be able to get something. All right? So let's pray. Father. Pastor, Pastor. Page one, do a tribute. And this time, um, the children now want to give you a tribute. Pat, are you, Philip, are you coming? No. He's the bashful one. But the kids wanted to give you a tribute really quickly, Pastor. Dear Daddy, I love you so much. You are the greatest father ever. When I fall, you help me up. When I'm sick, you help me get better. I love you. Dear Dad, we are so grateful that you are our father. There are other fathers out there that are like you, but no father is compared to you. We love you, Dad. And, and the kids and I decided this weekend you can go and have as many days, as many hours as you like at the golf course. Have a good time. <laughs> we love you. Thank y'all so much. Listen, y'all grab your neighbors if you haven't already done so. We're going to pray thank y'all so much. Now, y'all get y'all room clean when y'all get home. Y'all make sure y'all do that, all right? Listen, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We love you. Thank you so much for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you, God, for everything you have done and everything you have shared with us this day. Now we pray, God, that as we leave this place but not your presence, that you'll be with us. Bless this food we're going to receive. Bless those who have prepared it, God. Let it be nourishment to our bodies. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless y'all. We love you. Have yourself a wonderful afternoon. Let's go eat. Mm -hmm.